There's a bunch of big green men on the board. A load of jade golems. How do we deal with them? So we can maximize our spell count here. We can oh, play oopsie. the coins. And then we can play Yogg and simply pray and hope for the best. So, Bane of Doom. Uh, savagery, meh. Oh, draw a boom. I spots pretty good. Ooh, no fair. Demon fire nearly kills the Jade Golem. And then of course, Yogg kills himself. Almost out of cards. Of course he does. That's what he does. Kills himself. Almost out of cards. So we try one more time. This time with Shadow on. Who now has the Yogg battle cry. So far so good. Pretty decent board. Oh, two to our own face and Cataclysm. Clears the board. Discards our hand. Why would I expect anything less? Why would I expect anything less, of course? And we're not winning this game now. Yeah. Ultimate Infestation. What a way to go. And this is not me being salty or unhappy. I've actually had a lot of fun, an awful lot of fun playing this deck, and this is Crazy Foreigners Old Gods Shaman deck, which I was able to pick up from Reddit. Now, I think the consensus from Crazy Foreigner was that this deck is more fun than anything else, but it can be semi-competitive. Quite often, people don't know what to expect when facing this deck. Uh, it's different. You, you don't... This is not a deck that you see played every day. Uh, it's certainly not common. Now, how does the deck work? Well, one aspect of the deck is that it's a control-style deck. You have cards like Volcano, you have Hex, Healing Rain to heal your face, Devolve, and so on and so forth. You clear the board, control the board. Um, beyond that, you have some interesting combinations. You have Evolve and Unstable Evolution that go very well with Doppelgangster. Um, and you have um, an, an, a small number of Death Rattle minions um, which can be brought back to life with Nazoth. Um, you have a couple of Cthune activators which uh, obviously go with Cthune. Uh, you have Yogg Saron because you have spells in this deck. But what you are working towards is Shudderwok, who will then replicate the battle cries of Cthun, the battle cries of Nazoth, and the battle cries of Yogg. And with Grumble in this deck as well, um, you are going for insane value with Shudderwok. So, of course, the unpredictable RNG fun aspect of the deck comes in with Yogg more so than anything else. Um, you know, you put your faith in Yogg, you pray to Yogg, and you just hope for the best. So, I hit Legend in the February season, and I just wanted to play fun decks, and this was a deck that certainly took my interest. Let's have a look at it in action. This time against a priest. Rastakan versus Anduin. So at this rank, it's probably going to be big priest. You stand before King Rastakan. And on that note, I value keeping Volcano. It's board clear against anything big that he cheats out early. Far sight, yeah, it's pretty good. Draws me through my deck, cycles through. Um, and Evolve, yeah, always good against Big Priest. Hopefully you devolve into something good that messes up their res pool. That's always the hope. Of course, you can devolve into something that is even worse than was on the board prior, like devolving, I don't know, an Obsidian Statue that costs 9 into a Ragnaros that costs 8. Welcome! You may bow before me. So the start of this game is going to be slow for me and for him. Thankfully, we have the coin, so there's no opportunity for a 
Turn three coin barns. Ooh, hex. Pretty good. So, double devolve in hand. Hex in hand. Volcano in hand. We're in a pretty good position here against anything that he plays. Now, it's turn four. He hasn't snap played barns. So, what does that tell me? That tells me he doesn't have barns. Most impressive. And that tells me that his turn 5 is probably going to be slow as well. And the worst thing that could happen is a Shadow Essence on turn 6. Okay, 5 cost Hagatha. Now we're going to have a full hand next turn, we're going to have to play something. Um, and he passes as expected. So the question is, what do I play? Um, do I play the coin and pass? I'm going to play Hagatha. Um, I think. Because I think Electra. I think Electra is more valuable in this game, in this matchup. Particularly with Devolve. So Electra double Devolve I think is pretty good. There's Lotheb in the nick of time. So something that we can play. And uh, actually, that's really bad for me. I, I think that was a misplay. I should have played the coin. Um, I forgot that playing a minion puts a spell in my hand now. So we are going to mill a card. And we mill Grumble. Of course we mill Grumble. Of all the things that we could have milled. We get a mill beckoner of evil. We mill grumble. Of course we do. Anyway, should have played the coin. Didn't do it. So, let's see how he deals with a bunch of taunts. I'd expect Psychic Scream at this point. No? Okay. I mean, that didn't do a huge amount for him. Uh, two of the torts are still alive. And we're back in that position where I have to play something. So we're going to go with Electra here as a 3 3 body on the board. Still need to play something. So Unstable Evolution is fine. It's just a question of what do we evolve here. Um. I think it has to be the uh, the taunts. Three seven. Okay, pretty decent. That's not bad, and we'll use the coin. And welcome to the grand tournament. Um, evolve the three seven. Was that the right play? Should I have evolved Electra? But we now finally get a target for Hex. Ride the lightning. And um, he's nearly dead. So, next turn. Oh, okay. I was going to say, next turn, maybe we could consider lethal. No. But next turn, we will have a full hand. Interesting, he kills the Mana Tide Totem. I'm actually happy he did that. I'm actually happy he did that. So I'm looking at Cthune, and I'm thinking, okay. Did we just play him? Do we just get the six damage battle cry into the um, into the shadow walk pool? So we are going to mill a card again. Warriors of the frozen ways, rise. 
Uh, what card do we mill? The oh, bloody hell. Okay. Okay. Um, that's really annoying. Regardless, I mean, we can get through this Lich King um, very, very easily. I keep forgetting that playing minions puts spells in my hand, which then leads to me uh, milling myself. Keep forgetting that. Very annoying. You can tell that I'm clearly not used to playing this deck. This is actually my second game with the deck. My second game. And it's fascinating that up till this point, I mean, he hasn't had an opportunity to resurrect anything. He's just dealing with all of his big threats. Okay. So, we can play Doppelgangster and evolve and see what we get here. Ooh! So, we have an 8 8, and we have Illidan. Yes, you are not prepared. Great card. Oh. Oh well, the giant survives. Fine. Now, if I want to win this game, that's useless. Um, well, it's not useless, it's just not great. If I want to win this game, do I just not play Yogg? Because you saw what happened previously when I played Yogg. Uh, he discarded my hand and cleared the board. That lost me the game. That's not enough for him to survive, and we beat a big priest. Unbelievable. Okay, so Crazy Foreigners, Old God's deck. Well, once you get your head round how to play the deck, and once you realise that um, having Hagatha on board um, gives you spells to hand when you play minions onto the board, once you realise that that happens, uh, and then account for the fact that you don't want to mill yourself or overdraw, um, this deck is pretty fun. It's certainly a surprise, it's certainly a shock. I find it interesting with Yogg in this deck. I mean, Yogg is the X factor, the unpredictable RNG factor, where things can just go horribly wrong for you. If you take Yogg out and just keep Cthune and Nazoth as the old gods, those two cards are pretty stable. Um, you know what to expect. You know how much damage Cthulhu is going to do, and that'll be it. You know how many Death Rattle minions Nazoth will bring out. There are no surprises there. Whereas with Yogg, it's one surprise after another where things can just go horribly wrong. And actually, when you're in a winning position, playing Yogg can actually just lose you the game, particularly if he discards your hand. So. I guess it depends on what you want. Do you want the fun factor, or do you want to win more? That's, I think, the question. Regardless, still a semi-competitive deck. As you saw, we beat the Big Priest. We drew our Hexes, we drew our Devolves, we drew all of the things that we needed to ruin his day, and that was a lot of fun. So thank you very much for joining me, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all again very soon for more. Wild mode fun.